This is the fifth video in a series where I'll share what the eight Jungian functions in their two Nardian analytic or holistic flavors look like, adding specifically how they might show up in romantic relationships. If you're watching the series, you will note some repetition, but in case this is the one and only video you watch, I want you to have all the information. So feel free to use the chapter markers from the description, but also spaced repetition, like what we're doing here, will help you learn and remember the concepts. It's up to you. My main references for this video are Carl Gustav Jung and Dr. Dario Nardi. Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist who published his theory of psychological types in 1921, and Dario is a university professor, prolific researcher and author. He found evidence of psychological types in the neuroscience data captured by EEG assessments that he's completed with hundreds of participants at this point. And in case we haven't met, my name is Doris Fulgrave. I'm a relationship coach with a master's in applied psychology, and I help people create happier, healthier relationships. A couple of caveats before we begin, just to manage expectations. And again, in case this is the only video you watch, number one, these videos describe the functions in their purest state, but a function rarely shows up in its purest state because they interact with other functions and your brain is busy doing other things like managing your breathing and your blood pressure right now. So you may not resonate with 100% of the description of this function 100% of the time, and that's okay. Number two, these videos describe the function for this function type. You may not be this particular function type, which means this function may not be at the top or dominant in your consciousness. That's okay too, because it's still in your system, you still have access to it, and paying attention to this function may help you recognize when it pops up out of the unconscious, so you can practice integrating it consciously, which will give you a little more control over it perhaps, and then you can reap the benefits. With that, let's move from the broad to the specific, starting with the function intuition, as Jung called it, or intuiting, which is also used to describe it as a process. And then the function attitude is extroverted intuiting. And then the flavor for today is going to be analytic extroverted intuiting. And then finally, we'll go into dating, mating and relating insights. Ready? Here we go. The intuiting function is one of two irrational perceiving functions. Irrational because it's just about experiencing and perceiving because that's literally what it's doing. The intuiting function helps us appreciate underlying patterns and grasp the bigger picture, which are things that go beyond the immediate senses. It gives us vivid imaginations and a curiosity about the as yet unknown. It is creative and enthusiastic, novel and original, but also ingenious and geared towards freedom. Dr. Linda Behrens describes it in this way. Intuiting is a process of becoming aware of abstract information like symbols, conceptual patterns and meanings. It is an intangible knowing of what something means, how it relates to something else or what might happen. As an active perceptual process, it is more than a sixth sense. It often involves actively bringing together or forming ideas in novel ways. Sometimes this process is triggered by an external event or sometimes this abstract information just seems to present itself to our awareness. Moving on to the function attitude, extroverted intuiting, which is the dominant function for ENFP and ENTP types. Now what follows are Jung's words and his language from 100 years ago is a little different from how we speak today. He's quite male centric, so he uses he, him when describing all functions that are in feeling types. He also uses the word object to describe anything and anyone outside of you and subject to refer to you yourself, the person. Here goes. The intuitive is never to be found in the world of accepted reality values, but he has a keen nose for anything new and in the making. Because he is always seeking out new possibilities, stable conditions suffocate him. In other words, the opposite of concrete reality sensation or sensing types. He also says that extroverted intuiting types seize opportunities with extraordinary enthusiasm, only to abandon them as soon as they become known and no longer have potential for exploration or new insights. The paradox is the intuitive type thinks they have found their thing every time until the next shiny thing or person appears. In Jung's words, neither reason nor feeling can restrain him or frighten him away from a new possibility, even though it goes against all his previous convictions. 
He continues that intuitive morality consists in a loyalty to his vision and that this type is often perceived as an unscrupulous adventurer. While men pursue their interests in business, Jung suggests that in women, the intuitive capacity shows itself in the social sphere, making connections and finding men with prospects. He says it goes without saying that such a type is uncommonly important both economically and culturally. For example, when used for good causes, extroverted intuiting is the initiator or promoter of new enterprises, the natural champion of all minorities, and his capacity to inspire courage or to kindle enthusiasm for anything new is unrivaled. If the intuition truly fuses with the ego, this person brings his vision to life, presents it convincingly and embodies it. But to do that, this type has to stay still long enough to let one vision come to fruition and not, as Jung says, quit the newly planted fields while others gather the harvest. So much for the function and the function attitude. Now let's look at the flavor. Dr. Nardi again analyzed EEG data from his participants and found two distinct brain wirings. The one we're looking at today is the analytic style, also called the Yang style or flavor. And for reference, this flavor is focused on a goal. It filters out distractions and it looks like clarity and confidence. That's not to say it's simplistic. It considers the complexities of a situation and includes relevant variables. Its approach is top down. So it's driving the situation with a point in mind and people with the style like to solve problems quickly using familiar tools and they can be unaware of their own biases. The style is often more visual. It pays attention to what is being said and also facts, figures, rules, methods and labels. Thinking is often literal to the specific context and they often describe using analogies. In business, it's more comfortable with hierarchy, defined roles and leadership and likely careers for those with an analytical style include business engineering, finance, law, the military, hard sciences and tech. Dario calls the analytic extroverted intuiting type the marketer. He says they put on a show. They pitch and juggle many often unusual ideas, trusting quantity over quality in search of advantages or gains. It's the proverbial throwing pasta at the wall and seeing if it sticks to see if it's identity, but for ideas and possibilities. This type also likes to recruit others and rely on strong energy of ideas to shift situations to their liking. They want to make a lot of stuff happen and enjoy the process of exploring all the things that might be possible. And they usually have enough energy and enthusiasm for all the irons that they have in all the fires. They court uncertainty for progress, which is different from the danger or risk that's such a thrill for analytic extroverted sensing types, because uncertainty in this case means there's openness and potential and they enjoy doing the work to get others on board while they're selling their ideas. From the neuroscience certification that I did in 2012, I remember Dario saying that extroverted intuition lights up the whole neocortex like a Christmas tree pattern. This means your brain is literally firing on all cylinders, but at the same time, it's a bit wasteful to keep all the lights on all throughout the house, especially if you're not going to go anywhere with any of those light bulbs. As for relationship insights in dating, you're probably attracted to this type's confidence, optimism and positive energy. As described, the extroverted intuiting type likes variety and can be a social butterfly. Because they live for the future instead of in the present, they may not take the reality of red flags into account. They can also be a bit restless. They like to keep their options open, so are probably slow to make any serious commitments. And they might also idealize you a bit, which can be very flattering. In mating, people of this type are sexually free and happy to explore. Sex is probably a very important aspect of their romantic relationships to them, including as a kiss and makeup kind of practice or just to let off some steam after a stressful day. Given their general openness and curiosity, I wouldn't be surprised if they'd be open to non-monogamous relationships and non-binary sexual or gender explorations as well. I think their biggest turn on is their minds though. So if you can keep up with them intellectually as well as physically, you're going to have a firecracker of a relationship. In terms of relating as partners, they're going to try and delegate the mundane repetitive stuff to someone else. 
and they're going to enjoy having arguments or sparring wits or debating any topic just for the fun of it. In the conflict, they're not going to be lost for words, so you better have your arguments ready and laid out. And I will say try not to take their remarks too personally. Especially ENTP types often like to provoke just for the thrill of a lively exchange, so they may not mean to hurt your feelings. If this is happening regularly, communicate clearly where your lines are of what's a joke and what's insulting. Again, they're probably not doing it on purpose. They're also more likely to be the fun parent than the reliable, responsible one. Remember, this information is meant as an overview of the function in its analytic flavor. It cannot describe all the nuances and individual idiosyncrasies, but I hope you now have a better idea. If you think you have an analytical flavor of extroverted intuition or a partner of that type, please add your comments below. And for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Monday for holistic extroverted intuiting. Until then, feel free to check out this video next. I'll see you there.